Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today we're going to make a snowflake specimen card. This is part of the series 12 Days of Junk Journal Gift Ideas, my group that I I'm an administrator of the Friendly Junk Journal people. We have a select group that has volunteered to come forward and make a bunch of tutorials. So definitely check the description box down below for links to the other tutorials showing their version of a snowflake specimen card. Hey, by the way, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, especially if you enjoy it. And of course, do go ahead and feel free to ask any questions down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. All right, so this is kind of what we're making, just a couple of specimen cards, is what we call these, with some snowflakes in them. I've got a few supplies laid out here. I've got a scrap of cardstock. It's three inches by eight and a half inches. Use whatever you have. I have a book page. I've got some tattered angels, rubber stamps, some paint, and some other tools. So let me push everything out of the way and let's get started. All right, so for these specimen cards, I decided that what I wanted to do was do something with a book page. So that would be the covering for my foundation. This will be my foundation. And then I'm going to put the book page on top. But I didn't really want to see all that text. So what I'm going to do is take some acrylic craft paint. I'll shake it up really well. And I'll pour a little bit onto my paper. And then I'm going to spread it around. I've got an old player's card, a gift card, something like that, maybe a credit card you no longer use. And I find that if I just gently scrape it across my page and go all over and cover it, if I need more paint, I'll use it. But I really just want to obscure that text just a little bit. If you didn't know, I just got this at a slight angle, just kind of angled it down and then scraping across. I'll wipe off the excess paint, or if I have another scrapbook paper or scrap of paper, I will rub it off on that. This will take a couple of minutes to dry. You can speed up the process by using a heat tool or a hair dryer, but a heat tool would be better because it does get up a lot hotter faster. So you can see that that has covered it quite well. While I've got my acrylic paint out, I'm gonna grab a paintbrush and then I have a snowflake chipboard piece. This is part of the snowflake chipboard pieces. I've got a Christmas chipboard pieces. And if you happen to get the Christmas dream subscription box, there was some snowflakes in there as well. So I'm gonna grab my acrylic paint again and I'm going to coat both sides of the snowflake and set it aside to dry. Both sides are coated really well, so I'm just going to set it aside for a moment for it to dry. I want to make sure it's not sitting in wet paint because it will stick, and then all that effort put into it would be for naught. I have a couple of colors of Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I have Positive Vibes. It's a real pretty shade of blue with a pearlescent mica. And then this is Sapphire. So it's kind of a tone on tone blue. So what I want to do is make sure I'm shaking these up really well because there's mica in the bottom and you want that floating in the liquid. All right, so now I've got it shook up. I'm going to spritz and I'll spit that with Sapphire and now I'm going to spritz with the Positive Vibes. And depending on the look you're going for, if you want it to be a little bit more watercolor effect, add a little bit more. Just keep going until you get the saturation color that you like. I think I've got enough there, so I'm just going to tilt it just a little bit to get those Tattered Angels to run. I like the effect when you do this. The acrylic paint has a little bit of a resist when you do this, so that's why it moves a little bit better than if it was just plain paper. Once I think I've got it pretty saturated the way I want, I'll either set it aside to dry or use a heat tool. Today I'm going to use a heat tool. So there is my dry page. Isn't that pretty? I just love the shimmer that's on here. I know I want to cut this. So what I want to do is cut this piece in half and then I'll know what size to cut 
the covering. So this is going to be cut down to four and a quarter inches. So I'll have two pieces that are four and a quarter by three inches. And then I'll take this piece. And since I know it's three inches wide, I want a little bit of a border. I want to wrap around. So I'm going to the three and a half inch mark. And I'll save this piece for another project later. Four and three quarters. Yeah, that'll give us a nice border. So I'll cut this to four and three quarters of an inch. So I will look at these and see which one I like better for my front of my specimen card. This one's a little bit lighter, so I'm going to go with that. And then I have the snowflake from the Festive Cube, and I have Blueprint Sketch Distress Oxide ink. And what I'll do, let me grab another piece of paper here, is I will stamp this little snowflake all over in random fashion. And now that I have it covered, I'm going to grab some clear iridescent embossing powder and sprinkle it over the Distress Oxide. If you work quickly, that Distress Oxide stays wet for a little while and the embossing powder will stick to it. So I'm just tapping off the excess, clean up the embossing powder, and then I'm going to heat emboss this inside of a pan. I just like to put a piece of uh, aluminum foil wrap cardboard, or a metal pan so that I don't burn or warp my mat that's underneath here. Keep your heat tool moving over the embossing powder and then you'll start noticing that it changes the way that it looks. Depending on how dark your paper is, it could just change to where it's a little bit darker. It could be a little bit more shinier. So this is a great technique if you wanna make your own decorative papers. So there's the stamped images. I'm coming back to the snowflake since I have the embossing powder out. I'm going to grab my Versamark ink pad and press it to my snowflake, making sure it's got a good coverage on it. I'm going to sprinkle clear embossing powder over it that has the glitter in it. Put the embossing powder back, and I'll use my heat tool to heat emboss this. Now, again, when you're using heat embossing, you don't want to touch it right away. You want to make sure that it cools down before you pick it up. So one side has glitter embossing powder on it. I'll flip it over and let's do the same thing. We're going to press our ink pad, coat it with embossing powder and heat it. There is my snowflake. It's so nice and sparkly. I like my dirty fingers. All right. So what I'm going to do now is look at this and say, okay, which is going to be my front? which is going to be my back. This will be my back. So I'm going to grab the best glue ever. I like this glue for this type of a project because when you put little dots down and let it air dry till it's clear, it's sticky and then it'll stay in place wherever you put it. So I'll just put a few drops on the snowflake ends, maybe one in the middle. And I like that this glue also dries clear and it's got a little, I've got the medium tip I think is what goes on here I think that's what I have is the medium tip yes the medium tip and it's a nice precision tool so I'm going to push this up out of the way and let that air dry and let's go back to this piece and our cardstock so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to adhere the cardstock to the back side of my book page so I'll just put a little bit of glue on here now I did it in this order because I was finding that if I glued down my book page and embossed it, that the wet glue would leave kind of lines on my page. And I didn't want that texture. So that's why I'm gluing it in this order. I've got a bone folder, so I'm just going to press and that'll help smooth out that glue. I'll snip off the corners at an angle. And then I will fold these edges in. So I'll use my bone folder to encourage it to fold over the edge. And then I will glue those tabs down. So I'm just using a Lean's Tacky Glue. I'll go ahead and do that with the other piece because I want to make a sandwich. So I'm going to do both of these. But it won't be a sandwich I can eat. The next thing that I want to do is make a hole in here. So depends on what you have on hand. If you happen to have, say, a large 
punch. This is a one and three quarters inch of a paper punch. If you have a die cutting machine, you could use that. The trick is getting proper placement. My paper was too thick to put through the punch with two thicknesses. So what I did was I made a template and punched a square. And now what I'll do is grab a pen, make sure this is lined up in the center and draw a box. Then I have a craft knife. This one happens to be by Fiskars and I've got a ruler. So I will line up my ruler with that line on the metal edge side because you don't want to cut into your ruler on the wood side or a plastic ruler. So use that metal edge and then I'm just going to cut a straight line to the corner and then I'll rotate my paper and continue cutting those lines. I always put my cat back on just in case so I don't cut myself and then I'll just pop this out. Hopefully I got it cut all the way and it looks like I missed the corner so I'll just use my scissors. All right, so I've cut the square out. I'm going to use this as a template because if you don't, you won't have your squares lined up properly. And I'm laying it on top of what's going to be my back and I'll trace a square inside here. And I'll use the same technique. I'll just come in and cut that square out. All right, so I've cut both pieces. I'll line it up to test it. And it may not be perfect, but it's looking pretty good. So the next thing I want to do, just in case it isn't perfect, is I have a permanent marker, just a black marker, and I'm going to come into that inside area and then just outline it on the back side. That way, if I accidentally slip with my pen, it doesn't mark up the front of my card. So we just made a little square there. Repeat that. So I've got both pieces done. Now let's grab some distress ink and let's distress the inside of the square and around the edge. Now that I've applied the distress inks, I'll flip these over to the back side and I will get the best glue ever again. And this time what I will do is I'm going to make a square just outside that square there so we can adhere some transparency film. You don't need a lot of glue, just a little bit. And I will set these aside to dry until they're clear. Now for my window in my specimen card, I happen to have some transparency film. If, and just, I know you can't see it because it's clear, but if you don't have transparency film, you could use a packaging. I thought I had one laying here, but when the rubber stamps that I offer in my shop come in a little cello bag, you could use that bag. What I'm going to do is cut two squares that are two and a quarter inches square. And I failed to mention that the opening, this particular one, was based off of the size of my snowflake. And it is approximately one and three quarters of an inch. So while I'm waiting on the glue to dry over here to the side, I thought I would make a little label. So I have a three quarters of an inch tall by oh one and a half inch wide piece of cardstock that I've rounded the corners and I've applied some distress ink to the edge. And then I have this Dynamo, Dymo, I don't know if it's Dymo, I always want to say Dynamo, there's no end, Dymo label maker. And I want to put figure and then a number. So I'm going to go over here to the F and press hard and then rotate it to the I, come back to the G. I want a space, so I'll go over to the space, and then I want the number sign, and let's put, let's see, let's do 24, and then I'll go over to the cut and cut. Now, if you don't have a label maker like this, you could always t type it out on a computer and print it. You could use rubber stamps. I thought it would be kind of fun to use this label maker because I've had it for a while and I need to be using it. 
So I'm just going to put it right in the middle of my square. Now because I only used a small amount of glue, it's starting to turn clear. I'm going to give it another minute or two and then we will assemble this. So I'll be right back. It may be hard for y'all to see that, but the glue is no longer white and that's how I know it's dried. So I'm going to grab my little pieces of transparency and line it up over the square. And I'll do that again with the other one. Now, because transparency sometimes gets fingerprints on it, I'll grab a soft cloth. In this case, I'm using my shirt and I'm just rubbing in the middle in case there's any fingerprints or some dust. And then I know this is my front and this is the back. So I'll grab my little snowflake so the glue is dry and I'll position this however I want it to be seen and glue that down. And then I'll grab some Aline's Tacky Glue and put it all the way around the perimeter and glue these two pieces together. You could also use a double-sided tape if you tape if you don't have the perfect the best glue ever. I find that tape is rather expensive for me, so I like the glue a lot better. I don't mind waiting for it to dry. So now I'll sandwich these together. And then I'll usually set something heavy on it for a few minutes. I'll grab my label and let's glue that on the front. So there it is. There is our specimen card. So you have room on the back if you want to write or add another label. And then there's what it looks like on the front. And here are the other ones. I went ahead and used different snowflakes. So this is another chipboard snowflake that I had in my stash. This was the very first card that I made and I used a paper punch, which now I don't see. Oh, there it is. I used a paper punch after I put embossing powder onto a scrap of paper like I did with the chipboard and then punched it out and as you can see it was off just a little bit because I used the paper punch and I couldn't quite get that lined up perfectly and that's when I decided to go with the method of just cutting it by hand. Well I hope you enjoyed seeing this tutorial of making a snowflake specimen card as part of the 12 days of junk journal gift ideas. Come back tomorrow where I show you how to make a pocket that we can put these in and then add them to your junk journal. Definitely check the description box down below for the others that are also making tutorials as well as my blog post that has the list of all the products that I'm using and some close-up photos of them as well. Do check out the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group as well as my group by Linda Israel. It's a smaller group. I don't post a lot in there, but it's a great place that if you have questions that you want me to answer and not have all that clutter, you can go there. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. No, I go live on Mondays at 345 p.m. Central Standard Time. Do come check, check it out and hang out with us. Y'all have a great day. Bye.